All right, so in this topic, what we are doing is we are finding something called the mass percent from a chemical formula. So this question says, this is the chemical formula for methyl acetate. So here's methyl acetate. It says, calculate the mass percent of hydrogen in methyl acetate. Round your answer to the nearest percentage. So let's first ask ourselves, well, what is mass percent? You may also hear mass percent called uh, percent composition or percent by mass of a particular element. What is that element that we want the percent by mass of? We want the percent by mass of hydrogen. So let's write what mass percent or percent by mass is equal to. The percent by mass of an element uh, in a compound is equal to N. N represents the number of atoms of the element times the atomic mass of element. And this is going to be divided by the molecular or formula mass of the compound itself. Now, because this is a percentage, all of this is going to have to be multiplied by 100%. So, again, the percent by mass of an element is equal to N, and N is the number of atoms of the element in the molecule or um, compound, um, whatever we have. So here we have a, we have a compound. And what is the element we're looking at? Hydrogen. So the number of hydrogen atoms in this compound times the atomic mass of hydrogen. And hydrogen is our element, so this is of an element. Any element in that molecule uh, or compound. And all of that is going to be divided by the molecular, the, the molecular or formula mass of the compound. And I accidentally wrote of there. Let me just fix that. That should be or. Okay. So now let's plug the information that we have into this formula to find the percent by mass of hydrogen in methyl acetate. Well, let's look and see what we need. The first thing we need is N, which is the number of atoms of hydrogen in this compound. Can we find that? Yes, we can. The number of atoms of an element in a, in a compound or molecule is always going to be um, the number here that we get from the subscripts times the coefficient. So when we look at this molecule or this chemical formula, we assume that we have a 1 there. So we can interpret this different ways. Uh, we could say we have one molecule of this, one mole of this. Let's just use this simple uh, interpretation that goes along with our definition here. We'll say we have one molecule of this, one molecule of methyl acetate. In one methyl acetate molecule, how many hydrogen atoms do I have? Well, we've got three for each methyl group, but there are two of these. So two times three is what? Six. So if I have six hydrogen atoms, I take that and multiply it by one, it's six. So N is equal to six hydrogen atoms. All right, so we have N. What is the atomic mass of hydrogen? We get that from the periodic table. If you look at the periodic table, if you find hydrogen, it's atomic number one and it has an atomic mass of 1.0079 AMUs. So the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.0079 AMUs. Okay, so we have this now, and we have this. What else do we need to find the percent by mass of hydrogen in this, in this um, compound? Well, we also need the molecular or formula mass of a compound. Well, in this case, 
what we need is the molecular mass because this is a molecular compound. It is not an ionic compound. We use the term formula mass uh, in regards to ionic compounds. Okay, so because this is a molecular compound, we need the molecular mass. How do we find the molecular mass for this? We have to add up all of the masses of the atoms, each individual atom present in this molecule. So we need to figure out what is the atomic mass of this entire molecule from every single atom that contributes to that mass. So which atoms do we have present? Let's see, we've already determined that we have, for hydrogen, we have six atoms in one molecule, correct? Well, I also see carbon here. How many atoms of carbon do we have in one molecule? Total number will be uh, total number of atoms times the coefficient. So I have two carbon atoms here, but I also have another one here. So that's three. Three times one is three, so three carbon atoms. I also see oxygen. There are two oxygen atoms here. Is there oxygen anywhere else? No. So two times one is two. Okay, so what this looks like is I have six hydrogen atoms, three carbon atoms, two oxygen atoms in every single molecule. That's a total of 11 atoms. Let's see if we have the same thing here. Two, three, plus six, that's nine, and then two carbon atoms, that's 11, perfect. So our last step is to find the atomic masses of every single one of these atoms and add them up. So we have six hydrogen atoms. The atomic mass of a single hydrogen atom is 1.0079 and use. So six times the atomic mass of one hydrogen atom is the total mass of all of the six hydrogen atoms in this one molecule. For carbon, the atomic mass of one carbon atom, 12.011 and use. We have three total. For oxygen, the atomic mass of one oxygen atom is 16.00. We'll go with that one. We have two. So if I take six times this, plus three times this, plus two times this, I have the molecular mass of this compound. What is the mass of one of these molecules? That's what I have. So let's do the math. So again, if I take 6 times 1.0079, what I get is 6.0474 AMUs. And then if I take 3 times 12.011, what I get is 36.033 AMUs. And if I take 2 times 16, that is 32. AMUs. So if I add all of these together, 32 plus 36.033 plus 6.0474, I get 74.0804. Now I've gone beyond my appropriate number of significant digits here. I really should stop at two decimal places, uh, but I just decided to go all the way out. Okay, in this case, it's all right. And so this is our total mass for one methyl acetate molecule in atomic mass units. And so now that we have everything we need, we have the molecular mass of the compound. So let's write that here with our knowns. It is 74.0804 AMUs. Now let's plug it into our formula. The percent uh, the mass percent of hydrogen, so mass percent of hydrogen is going to be equal to the number of hydrogen atoms, which is 6, times the atomic mass of hydrogen, 1.0079, 
divided by the molecular uh, mass of the compound, which we found here, 74.084 AMUs. So, 6 times 1.0079 is 6.0474 AMUs divided by 74.084 AMUs. So we'll get a number here. It will we'll be a decimal. And remember, we have to multiply this times 100% to convert it to a percentage. So what is 6.0474 divided by 74.084? This is the final question to ask. That turns out to be 0 0.081629. I haven't worried about significant digits yet. I just wrote it all the way out. My units, in this case, are going to cancel. A and U's over A and U's. If I multiply this times 100%, what I have to do is just move the decimal place to the right two times. That turns out to be 8.1629%. It says round, round to the nearest percentage, which is the nearest whole number. That would be 8%. And that is my answer. So let's ask ourselves, what does this answer mean? What does this value of 8% mean as a mass percent of, of hydrogen? What it means is, when I have this substance, methyl acetate, it doesn't matter how much methyl acetate I have. I can have a lot or a little bit. It doesn't matter. The amount of methyl acetate that I have, 8% of that mass can be attributed to the hydrogen present in the substance. So if I have 100 grams of methyl acetate, I can say that 8% of that 100 grams, or 8 grams, is from the hydrogen atoms present. If I have 1,000 grams of methyl acetate, 8%, so that would be 80 grams of that thousand grams is from the hydrogen that is present. So that's what percent, uh, percent by mass or mass percent tells us. Of the total mass, how much of that mass can be attributed to that particular element? Now again, please be aware this is math. Uh, there are many different ways to approach this. It all begins with how you interpret this chemical formula. So we chose the molecular interpretation. One molecule of methyl acetate has so many atoms. You could also use the molar interpretation, and that is the interpretation that Alex uses. If I have a mole of this, how many moles of each of these elements would be present? And the math would be a little bit different, but you end up with the same answer in the end. I prefer the molecular interpretation. Uh, it coincides with this formula that we use. And uh, so you just have to decide what works best for you and which you prefer. But you have both explanations at your disposal. You have my explanation, which uses the molecular interpretation. You have the explanation in Alex, which follows the molar interpretation.